dealing with biblical truths, a revelation that comes from the almighty living God and the Son, Jesus Christ, given to his apostles. They want to be looking at this subject matter of a time for silver, silver rights and spiritual rights. There's a difference. I want you to turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 22. Uh, this focus is on personal growth. Personal growth is needed in the Christian life. The Christian life is a bit different from just the ordinary life of the breathing in a world system. The Christian life is governed uh, from the gifts that God has given you and me. What he has done at our new birth, he has given us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is given to reside in our temple. Another thing we need to understand, our bodies become the temple of God. Our bodies is the dwelling place of God. It is where God works. Uh, he is continuing his work on earth through us as his disciples. I'm glad to be a disciple of Christ. And I am a member of the body of Christ, one of the members of the body, uh, to be used, uh, this member is to be used uh, to glorify Christ. Now, in Acts chapter 22, it, we concern ourselves with civil rights. Civil rights has to do with you and me as citizen of the place in which we live. We live in the United States of America, so therefore we are citizens of the United States of America. Another thing we need to understand that we, are, we have citizenship in two places. Uh, our citizenship is also in heaven. Amen. And that's by faith. So in the Acts, the 22nd chapter, verses 22 to 30, I want to read from the King James Version. It's called the King James Authorized Version, which was the transla English translation of 1611. And then I'm going to read from the New International Version. Beginning at verse number 22, I'm going to read it. Since I'm dealing with the text that's given here in this booklet. And they gave him audience unto this word, and then lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. And as they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust into the air, the chief captain commanded him to be brought into the castle and bade that he should be examined by scourging that he might know wherefore they cried so against him. In verse 25, And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? And when the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. Then the chief captain came and said to him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yea. And the chief captain answered, With a great sum obtain I this freedom. And Paul said, But I was free born. Then straightway they departed from him which should have examined him. And the chief captain also was afraid after he knew that he was a Roman and because he had bound him. Verse 30, on the morrow, because he would have known the certainty wherefore he, he was accused of the Jews, he loosed him from his bands and commanded the chief priests and all the council to appear 
and brought Paul down and set him before them. That was from the King James Version of the Scripture. I want to read the same Scripture from an updated uh, translation, the New International Version, or it's called the NIV. Listen, verse 22 beginning. The crowd listened to Paul until he said this. Then they raised their voices and shouted, Get rid the earth of him. He is not fit to live. And as they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air, the commander ordered Paul to be taken into the barracks. He directed that he be flogged and questioned in order to find out why the people were shouting at him like this. As they stretched him out to flog him, Paul said to the centurion standing there, is it legal for you to flog a Roman citizen who hasn't even been found guilty? When the centurion heard this, he went to the commander and reported it. What are you going to do? He asked. This man is a Roman citizen. The commander went to Paul and asked, Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? Yes, I am, he answered. Then the commander said, I had to pay a big price for my citizenship, but I was freeborn. I was a freeborn citizen, Paul replied. Those who were about to question him withdrew immediately. The commander himself was alarmed when he realized that he had put Paul, a Roman citizen, in chain. Verse 30, the next day, since the commander wanted to find out exactly why Paul was being accused by the Jews, he released him and ordered the chief priests and all the Sanhedrin to assemble. Then they brought Paul and had him stand before them. Here in this lesson, we're concerned with the civil rights. Civil rights has to do with us as citizens of the country in which we live. We all here are Americans. So therefore, we are citizens of the United States of America. We are under a republic, and a republic has laws. So we are under the laws of the United States of America. Uh, we are under the federal government, uh, which uh, headquarters at Washington. We also are under the state government, which is the state of New Jersey. Depends on what county you live in, in the state of New Jersey, you have county government. Depending on what municipality you live in, you have municipal government. And all those governments have laws. There's a federal law, state law, county law, municipal law. Well, all those laws have something to do with us as citizens. We are bound by law. And to be a citizen, it means that uh, you and I must uh, abide by those laws. I say just laws. Maybe some of the laws are unjust. But the just laws, and most of the laws, uh, I imagine, well, we know uh, that the citizens are bound by law to keep the order. That's why laws are given. But for the most part, do not abide in a correct manner of life. So a republic has to be bound by law. We're bound by federal law. For example, uh, the government has to exist, it has to work, it has to operate, but the government needs uh, finance to operate. So what the federal government does, it has uh, the law, R-I-S, R-I, 
IRS. <laughs> IRS, which means an internal, uh, what, what is it? Revenue. Internal, internal revenue, revenue service. service. That means you and I who work have to pay a certain amount of our income to the government. What is the purpose? Well, we put money into the pot, figuratively speaking, so that the government can keep operating. Amen? Yes. All right. Well, we have the state government. You and I live in the state of New Jersey. New Jersey has to operate. So what do we do? We pay state taxes. Amen? Amen. We put that into the treasury of the state so the state can operate. Well, not only that, but we have a county. You and I, well, some of us. Mm -hmm. I live in Mercer, Mercer County. What, right. what about you? Middlesex. You live in Middlesex. Mm -hmm. Well, in Middlesex, uh, Mercer and Middlesex have laws. They need to operate. So tax dollars, our tax dollars goes to, uh, our tax dollars will go to uh, the county in which we live so that the county can operate financially. Because it, it, the reason for that, there is workers needed to carry on the government. And uh, they have to be paid by law. Not only do you have the, uh, the county government, but in each county you have municipalities. I think in New Jersey you have about 565 municipalities in, this, in the state of New Jersey. Did you know that? Well, all those municipalities have workers that need to be paid for their services. So therefore, we pay taxes to our municipality. In the municipality of Trenton, we pay taxes and our taxes paid to the municipality and a certain amount goes to the county. It's got a slice like a pie. And it goes to the county, some, yes, to the county, amen. And and out of that slice, uh, the schools mm -hmm. need to operate. So some of our taxes go to the system of the school. Why do we do that? Because we are citizens of the place in which we live. First of all, we are citizens of the United States, right? Yes. We are citizens of the state in which we live. We are citizens of the, the county in which we live. We are citizens of the municipality in which we live, right? Amen. Amen. So, in order to be a good citizen, a decent citizen, we must abide by the laws of the government of our uh, place of residence. The Apostle Paul was a, by birth, he was a Roman citizen. He was also a Jew by physical birth. And uh, one thing about the Apostle Paul, he was an apostle of Jesus Christ. An apostle means uh, one who is sent from. So an apostle is one who is sent from whoever uh, calls him and commissioned him to do a certain work. Paul was commissioned by Christ to preach the gospel to mainly the Gentiles, the nations. Also, he was indebted to the Jews, his own brethren, but mainly he was indebted to the Gentiles. Well, the Gentiles had uh, no written law as the Jews had from Sinai. God gave the Jews the Ten Commandments from Sinai, put it on a stone. So the Jews, when they received the law through Moses, they said, all this we will do and be obedient. So what the Jews did, they entered into what is called a covenant relationship with God. And in a covenant relationship, you must, a person must abide by the laws of that covenant. Amen? Amen. So the Jews had a covenant written on stone from Sinai. God gave the laws to Moses, and Moses gave the laws to the people. But the nations, the Gentiles, had no written law from God. They had a law, but it wasn't written from God. They had a law 
that was uh, composed of their own thinking. Uh, they became a law unto themselves. And as, as a result of that, you find the nations living immoral lives. Why were they living immoral lives? That's part of, a, of the fall of humankind. If you remember in Genesis, God made man, he made Adam, and he also made the woman. Why did he make the female? Well, the Bible says, God saw. It was not good that man should be alone. So what God did, he, he made woman for the man. That's grace. Yes. We have to understand the concept of grace. Grace means that God has given you and me everything we need. Yes. Yes. Amen. Everything we need. And when we understand grace, that humbles us. Amen. And, and causes us not to boast in ourselves. But we, when we understand grace, we boast in the one who has given grace. You and I are sitting here today. We are breathing oxygen. And you didn't have to buy it. Why didn't we have to buy it? It's granted as a gift to you and me. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, it is. Well, you say some have to buy oxygen. Well, what they are buying, they're not buying oxygen, but they are buying the container. They have to pay a price for the container, which is, then they have to pay for the service. Amen? Yes. Amen? That's what you're paying for. You're not paying for oxygen. Oxygen is a, is a gift from God. Amen? Amen? Well, you and I are citizens of the great United States of America. Now, a few weeks ago, we had a cruise. Some of the saints here had a cruise. We cruised to the Bahamas. Before we could cruise, we had to have a passport. Passport. And I, I, I admire looking at the passport. And the passport, it has, it has a passport of the United States of America. And as you open the page, it says, we, the people. What does that mean? It means that the United States of America is a democracy. And a democracy means it is a government of the people, by the people, and for the for the people, yes. right? And it means that you and I uh, uh, govern by the laws that comes to the people. Now everybody can't go to Washington. Too many people. So what do we do under democracy? We appoint servants to represent us. So we are under a representative government. Amen? Amen. We have coming up Tuesday is a, a voting for a senator to take Senator Luckenberg's place. He died. Right? So we have some running for that seat. How many of you going to vote? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> but as a citizen, you have a right to vote. Well, first of all, I'm going to vote. Yes. Some say, I don't care, it's a primary. My vote don't count. Yes, it does. Your vote counts. Everybody's vote counts. So, as a citizen of the, of what? Of the state of New Jersey, whatever county you live in, a municipality, you and I ought to use our citizenship. And we have rights to vote. Amen? Amen? So I just want to pass it on. So We're getting back to the math. Is, excuse me. Yeah, I was just want to add that uh, what happens when you get a high percentage of people that don't vote, then the representative that's supposed to be of the people is not, uh, it, it is not does not uh, represent all the people because all the people didn't exercise their vote. Right. Yeah. So then he represents the people that voted. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. That's one thing you have to understand about government. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother D. So uh, we are citizens. 
first of all, we're citizens of the United States of America. And getting back to the passport, well, the passport, you, you really uh, enjoy being a citizen when you're out of the country. I had a privilege to go to South Korea, and that's a long way away. It's about 13 hours difference in our time. I was privileged to go there in 1988. 1988 is a time when they had the Olympics in Korea, and those signs, all the celebrating. Uh, but I appreciate the passport. Amen. I was a citizen. I was a foreigner. But I was a citizen of the United States. Sometime I would pull out my passport and look at it. <laughs> citizen of the United States of America. But I don't advise you to go into a country where the embassy closed. Some of the embassies have been closed in certain countries, right? I don't want to go there. If I get in trouble, where, where am I going to go? The embassy is designed, if you're a citizen of the United States, you get in trouble over in the country, you can go to the embassy, right? So much for that. But Paul, getting back to this lesson, uh, is a time for civil rights and spiritual rights. Let's listen to the lesson background. The Apostle Paul, the Apostle of Jesus Christ, went to Jerusalem, and the events there eventually led him to his getting to Rome. Paul was a preacher of the message of Christ. Now, the message of Christ is a message of salvation from sin. What God has done. He has uh, called humankind, both male and female, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. You and I are citizens of the United States of America. We are also citizens of the kingdom of God. Yes. And we have to know the difference. Mm -hmm. In the United States of America, again, is governed by the laws of the land, of the people. But in the kingdom of God's dear son, the people, whatever nation they're in, has nothing to do with the legislation of God's law. You see, God's law is, is, uh, was originated in heaven. And we have a, re uh, a revelation given to us. And Christ is the one who lived among us for a while to bring us the revelation of God who is our creator. And the reason that had to be done, God is spirit. No man has ever seen God at any time. But what God did, he allowed his son to come from heaven to earth. So Jesus Christ was sent from God. And since he was sent from God to earth, he is also called the Apostle. He is the Apostle of God. He came among us to show us God, to show us what God was like. John uh, beautifully uh, put it in his Gospel, John 1. At verse 1 it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He skipped down to verse 14 of that passage, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Yes. You and I would not never have understood the concept of grace if it had not been for Jesus. Amen. We would never have understood what God was like if it had not been for Jesus. And one, one reason you and I are limited. We are in the flesh. You and I are in a human body. That kind of, didn't sound, that's kind of sound weird. You and I are in a human body? Yes. You and I are made in the image of God. 
But what does the Bible say about God? God is spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You and I also. But our spirits dwell in a human body. Right, right. God has given you and me a human body. Mm -hmm. So as Brother Deans had in his diagram on the board, uh, God communicates with you and me, but he communicates, excuse me, he communicates through our spirit. Yes. Spirit speaks to spirit. Amen. That is another thing. What hinders God, or hinders you and me, and hinder God, but hinders you and me, from receiving the revelation of God mm -hmm. is what is called the flesh. Yes. We're in a human body. And since we're in a human body, you know, we have uh, certain emotions in the human body. Uh, we have uh, certain things going on. And one of the things about the human body, uh, uh, the human body, we are in rebellion to God with our human bodies. And God, even though he has given you and me his spirit, uh, the flesh, our human cells, war against the spirit of God. Amen. Because in the flesh, we want to do what we like. And we want to do what we want to do. And that is what uh, causes the church not to operate as it ought to because of human beings Amen. in rebellion against God the Father and also God the Son. Mm -hmm. But the Apostle Paul was sent to uh, both the Jew and the Gentile, but mainly to the Gentiles. Now, if you notice in, the, in our lesson, as we read it in Acts chapter 22, the Jews, when he went to the Jews, Paul, being a Jew himself, the Jews are violating Paul's civil rights. That eventually, he would have to exercise his spiritual right as a minister of Jesus Christ to the saints at Rome. Paul had been warned by the prophet. Now last week, he wasn't said in the same lesson, but there's a prophet named Agabus. He had been warned by this prophet not to go to Jerusalem because he told Paul what you're going to meet there. All right? And guess what Paul, Paul well, the lesson was entitled, I Ain't Scared. Yes, right. Paul went, regardless of what the prophet said, he went up to Jerusalem. So when he got up to Jerusalem, he encountered his own brethren, his own uh, Jewish brethren. Mm -hmm. And they tried to give him a hard time. Hard time. They always wanted to trouble Paul. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons they troubled Paul, they didn't like because he had changed from Judaism to what is called the Christian faith. In other words, he left Judaism and turned to one who is called Jesus the Christ. They didn't like that. See, human tradition binds a lot of folk, and human tradition will cause folk not to obey the Christ whom God, the living God sent. Right. So what we have in the world as a whole, we have a folk divided culturally. Now in the United States of America, uh, the idea is that we are individuals. And what is taught in the United States is individualism. Mm -hmm. And that is one, one of the reasons we have problems. That's right. We have problems even in the government. Even though we have representatives, but you know the representatives are kind of pushed along by the special interest groups Amen. <laughs> with a lot of money. Yes. And they'll say, in so many words, uh, election time come, coming, and if you don't do what we want you to do, uh -huh. we will out. vote you out. out. So they get a little prey. I get a little afraid. So uh, what we have in our government, they deal, on, uh, they deal with individuals. And individuals get together. And they come against <laughs> the, the government. Yes. That's why the government is 
uh, moving from the morals of, of God. To, see, God made humankind again. He made humankind male and female made he then. Genesis 1. But what is happening in the United States of America, and they try to do it by law, they are moving away from the law of God, or the standard of the revelation of God, and they are doing what they want to do because we are individuals. Yes. And since we are individuals, uh, then I, I walk the way I feel. That's right. But you see, the revelation hasn't has an anything has nothing to do with the way we feel. The revelation is given by the living God who created you and me. And once we decide not to live according to his government, then we have problems. So what we what we have in our nation, we have the civil government warring against the spiritual government. And what the government is doing to us as Christians is telling us by law we have to come under the civil government. Yes. So what they're doing, they're taking away our rights as citizens of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Now we have problems. The problem is, are we going to live by the principles of the kingdom of God or are we going to live by the principles of the civil government? What are you going to do? If the, for example, what is going on now? In the civil government, they try to pass laws where those of the same sex will marry. That means two females can marry, or two males can marry, but that's against the principles of the kingdom of God. Yes. Because God made Adam, the first man, and he made him to, to till the garden. But he saw, uh, what, what Adam saw, he saw the animals, looked around, he had, God gave him uh, the ability to name the animals. Yes. And he did. But one thing Adam noticed, he noticed every for every male that was a female. Mm -hmm. But he looked into himself, I don't have him. Mm -hmm. God saw that. It was Brother Matthews. There's several examples in the Bible where when man's stomach is full, when he's doing okay, uh, then he starts to think he don't need God. He forgets God. He, you know, yeah, Thank so that's you, where we are. That's where our government is now. Yes. Uh, most of the people that live in this country have a full stomach. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then more and more people think they don't need God. Thank you. Yes. Full stomachs, you don't need God. That's yeah. right. But how do we get what we get? From God. From God. From God. Mm -hmm. Through the energy that God has given. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. We talk about movement. We talk about movement, right? We move because of God. Mm -hmm. The Bible teaches in Him we live. Yes. Move mm -hmm. and have our being. That's in the 17th chapter of Acts. Read it all. Not should I? Yeah, I was going to say a lot of people that uh, claim Christianity are starting to support, um, you know, back up the government with these decisions. Mm -hmm. um, to say, you know, in the name of Jesus is love and God loves everybody, they're just starting to accept. You know, the things the government is doing, like abortion and same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. They're saying it's unloving to be judgmental against mm -hmm. Unloving to be judgmental. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't have to be judgmental. God is the judge. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he has put his laws and writing in the Bible. What we have in our society, what do you have the, what is that word, Illuminati? The Illuminati, the folk who claim to have some special revelation. Yes. And that special revelation is apart from the word. Mm -hmm. It's an age we're living in. And it's in the ac in academia. Mm -hmm. It's in the music world. Everywhere you go, you see that uh, we have a certain knowledge nobody else has, but my group. Mm -hmm. But we need to go beyond that. But get him back to Adam. God saw that Adam was alone. <laughs> so he says, I, I like this, God did some of them. What God did, he made uh, man 
a mate, suitable for him. And that uh, mate he made was uh, female. God made both male and female, right? Gave the male his daughter. So yet, we get away from the order, I think, in a uh, class like this, we should know God's order. Notice God's order. God created Adam, the man. Uh -huh. Then he created uh, woman for man. So if we follow the order, you have a uh, woman. What else do you have? Who created man? God. God is Now, understand, this is what we call a chain of command. Mm -hmm. The command was given by God to man, Adam. He wasn't around at the time. She hadn't been created for the man. Man was alone, gave man a command. Uh, see, man was a tiller, he was a farmer, right? So he was in the garden to till the garden, to till the, the land. Uh, so God said uh, to Adam in the command, he says, every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is in the middle of the garden, you shall not eat of it, neither, he said, you shall not eat of it. In the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Surely, not maybe, surely die. All right, that was a command given to Adam. When God created Adam's female, according to the chain of the command, what did that man do? Adam gave the commandment to the woman. Right? Amen. So uh, there was in the garden one called a serpent. I spell serpent. P-E-N-T. A serpent. We know that serpent is the devil. by revelation he's the devil evil That's right. he's evil mm -hmm. so that serpent approached not he didn't approach Adam mm -hmm. notice how he does that yeah. what are you saying who the said the that he went I like that this is a lady talking <laughs> he went to what to the week of sex see if I had said that I would have been a male chauvinist. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lady who said that. Yes. <laughs> he went, that's exactly right, he went to the weaker vessel. It doesn't mean muscle, but it just means that uh, she is, is under man. That's God's creation. Right. If you read Genesis, uh, the desire of the woman is always to her man. And he shall, here's the problem, and he shall rule over you. Oh, they don't like that in the mouth. You might be laughing about this. But then, yes, please. I'm going to show you something. You wonder why folk are having problems? One of the problems they're having uh, among, look at the order, the woman. Is trying to rule the man. Oh, that's yeah. right. You're absolutely right. The man says no. Because God, I'm, I'm under God. So you have the, what they call the battle of the sexes. Yes. See, we, if, if they follow God's order and God's revelation, he won't have the problem. Amen. Let's get back to Apostle Paul. Now, Apostle Paul exercised his spiritual rights. What he does, he has to teach the Gentiles how to live. See, the, see, the Gentiles are in the fall, as well as the Jews, all have fallen. And you have a problem. The problem with humankind is a man that to obey God. Yes. Man doesn't want to obey God. The woman doesn't want to obey man. That's right. So look at the woman doesn't want to obey man. Man doesn't want to obey God, so it goes okay. up mm -hmm. in disobedience. But if, it, if it's right, if 
God gives a command, his revelation to man. If man obeys God, and the revelation is given to the woman, and all obey God, you don't have any problem. That's right. Amen. Amen. I'm going to give you a spiritual uh, revelation. Go with me first to 1 Timothy 2. I'm going to show you the order. We're talking about our civil rights and uh, spiritual rights. Now, we have civil rights. Keep in mind, our civil rights come to, uh, as a result of the nation we live in. Yes. We're citizens, so therefore, we are under the laws of the land. That's right. But under this kingdom of God, we are under the laws of God. <clears throat> First Timothy. You have it? The second chapter. <clears throat> Excuse me. First Timothy, the second chapter. Here's what Bible. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Bible, the Bible says in verse 12, listen to Paul, he, he, he goes with the order. He says, but I suffer. Not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority <coughs> over the, excuse me, <coughs> pardon me. Are you there, First Timothy 2? Here's what he said. I suffer a woman not to teach, not to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Verse 13, for Adam was first born. You see that? Yeah. Chain of command, Adam was first born. And what did it say? Then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. How many of you uh, read that and say, well, Paul, I don't know what he's talking about. He's a chauvinist pig. But Paul is not writing from where he feels. He's writing from the point of creation. And let's go hasten and go over to Genesis 3. Genesis is the book of beginning. It's the, it's the order of God. And Genesis chapter is 3. In the third chapter of Genesis is the fall of man. And the fall means when man disobeyed God, he went against God's ordering. <coughs> and uh, when he did that, he created a little problem. But Matthew, yes, sir. In, in, in science we say that uh, in the absence of order, we have chaos. Chaos, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Thank God for my brother. Man. In the absence of, <clears throat> excuse me, in the absence of order, yes, we have chaos. Yes, that's right. Disorder. That's right. All right, let's see. we have to hasten on. Now, in Genesis three, verse one, it says there was a serpent up here. The Bible says the serpent was the most subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to, unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Well, God didn't tell him you eat of every tree of the garden, but one. This is how he approached her. And the woman said, Unto the serpent we may eat of the fruit of the trees, plural, of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Mm -hmm. And she knew the command. Where did she get the command? Okay. Even though she seemed to add to the command, but she got it. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> okay. It's there, neither shall ye touch it. So she knew it. Okay. Now, look, 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 look at this now. Look at verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. That's what she said. Mm -hmm. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. You see what he did? Let's put a negative there. You shall not surely die. Then it goes on. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. See, the serpent said, 
the reason God is holding out from you in that command, if you eat, you'd be like him. He don't want you to be like him. He wants you to be under him. He wants you to be subjected to him, not equal with him. You see what he's trying to do? Did he do it? Yes, he did. Yes. And the woman saw, verse 6, that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and it tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. What does the Bible say? Verse 7, the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. But the point is, God approaches man at verse 8. He approaches man and he calls unto Adam. And Adam says, we heard your voice and we hid ourselves. God knew then they had lost their innocence. When we sin, we lose innocence. We lose our knowledge of what life ought to be like, how we ought to live life. Now, as he approached, uh, and God told him, you, you, you're naked, but who told you you were naked? And listen to what Adam, Adam did. The man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, notice this girl, and the woman said, the serpent died on me. And I did eat. Mm -hmm. Pass it on. You pass it on. Everybody. That's been doing for centuries, and even to the 21st century, people are still doing it. Mm -hmm. Even got it written now in the in the psychology, a talk and cure. Uh, you don't give any direction. Non-directive psychology, where you you sit down and you listen, but you don't give any direction. You listen to what the folk have to say. Call it a talk and cure. But. But I want to tell you, as we close, God gives direction. God's a God of, he's a director. What did he do to the man? He gave man direction. That's right. The man gave the direction to Eve. What did Eve do? She's supposed to have been under the man. That's right. You know what she did? She put herself on another head. Yeah. This is what she did. The serpent beguiled me. Mm -hmm. Get it? Mm -hmm. That's right. She shouldn't have been, in, been right. here. She should have been following the plan. Because Adam was not deceived. Get the scripture? Mm -hmm. yeah. Eve was deceived. Mm -hmm. What was she deceived? She was following mm -hmm. another order. Mm -hmm. That's what sin <clears throat> is. No, that sin see. is when man follow another mm -hmm. order other than the order that God decreed and has given. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have to exercise our spiritual rights. And our spiritual rights is staying with the order of God. Okay. Just uh, one other thing. Adam didn't, as you say, go against God. Mm -hmm. But Adam allowed mm -hmm. the woman to control him. He wasn't, the situation. Mm -hmm. but change order. Yeah. he wasn't initially deceived, but he did go against God when he followed the woman. Is that correct? Correct. That's it. He would do all that time. He, was, he yeah. allowed the woman to use some authority. Yeah. So what happened, for man should be the woman to the place. That's right. It means use some authority. It means she took control of it. That's right. If God wanted woman in charge, he would have put woman then man. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's not what you you still have that problem going on today. Amen. 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 I'd like to say something, but I can't say it. No. That's the problem we have in. That's the problem we have in the kingdom of God, the church. That's right. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father, our God, we are grateful for the revelation of Scripture to understand the difference in civil rights and spiritual rights. We exercise our civil rights because we're citizens of the country in which we live. We exercise our spiritual rights because we are in your kingdom, the kingdom of God's dear Son. Help us to understand uh, both realms and help us, uh, Lord, by your grace to walk according to your will. It is our prayer in Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen.